Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. So resources, things like our Hello World service, they might be sent information as much as they're sending information. Remember, part of the verbal communication is not just to get me a resource, but it's also about putting and deleting and posting new state for new resources. So when we take a look at any one of the methods that is out there in our resource, we might find this annotation, at consumes. In this case, at consumes plain text. What does that specify? Well, that specifies to our resource that in this case, it had better be aware of and be able to use incoming text as part of our request. So in this case, and as probably pretty likely, using the at post annotation, so we're going to be posting new data into our resource, new state for our resource, calling respond to message with some sort of plain text. And in this case, we're going to get that via, in this case, a string called message. So the at consume specifies, again, line types that can be accepted or, if you will, consumed by our resource. If a resource is not able to consume whatever type of data, whatever line type is being sent in, well, then you're going to get back an HTTP error, an HTTP 415 error, again, unsupported media type. So as we saw before our break, we can take advantage through our JAX RS environment well, the HTTP paradigm, and send back a simple HTTP error message that you might see from a website, for example. It says, hey, I can't support taking in that type of uh, data. In addition to being able to request certain formatted data and consuming certain line type data, we might also find that we want to get some information along that path. Remember our example of the URI was to give me a student, maybe the James Bond student. How do we do that in our JAX RS world? Well, to specify as part of the URI, URI certain variables, we can do those as part of the path with an at path annotation, and then specify as a parameter to that at path annotation with curly braces what our actual parameter name is. So in this particular case, when we call on hello world, we're also going to be having our clients pass in a username as part of our path. Now, when you do this, folks, make sure that your servlet mapping has taken into account this extra information that might be part of your URI. In other words, as we see the request come in now to this, uh, this uh, web container world, it's going to be slash hello world slash some username. If you haven't provided some sort of wildcard indication in your URL pattern mapping in WebXML, then obviously the additional data is going to be interpreted as part of the URL and therefore cause all sorts of routing problems and obviously cause application errors in our environment. So when you're using path mechanisms to pass variables into your resources, make sure your WebXML document and URL pattern matching has provided for that type of uh, passive information. In addition to simple uh, names for our variables on the path, we can even use things like regular expression to help dictate or, if you will, constrain what valid characters can be on that path. So here, again, I'm saying that my path for hello world will contain a username path variable, but I'm also dictating with regular expression that I expect that particular username to start with a capital letter and then any series of letters after that. So using regular expressions, um, if you will, kind of uh, setting up a validation mechanism, a uh, cheap and uh, kind of a uh, simple validation mechanism for users to send me data, or if you will, clients to send me data. And what happens if they don't meet that regular expression? Well, what goes back is a 404, HTTP 404 error. Not found. It sounds a little bit misleading. It almost sounds like the resource is not available or not found. In fact, the resource might have been there, but as far as uh, the mapping is concerned, since your username didn't make or meet the regular expression criteria, and for all intents and purposes, that resource is not available to you. If you need multiple variables, how do we take care of that on a path? Well, you just separate those curly braced variables with a slash. So in our example here, we're going to be calling on the hello world resource again, passing in both the first name and last name. Now, how do we get the data from those path variables? Well, inside of our resource methods, things like say hello, as we saw before the break, what do we need to do? Well, inside of the method 
parameters, you specify with an at path parameter annotation an indication of uh, which parameter, in this case username, is going to be used to fulfill the parameter as part of that method call. So the path parameter username is going to supply the string username in this case. Again, if the uh, path parameter variables can't be cast into the specified type, or if we've got some naming that's incorrect there and we didn't find that path parameter or something of that nature, we get back again an HTTP 404 error. Essentially, again, the resource was not found, or for all intents and purposes, essentially not available to us under those given circumstances. We can also use query strings in addition to path parameters to provide data into our RESTful web services. How do we do that? Well, we use the at query parameter annotation. So again, going back to my say hello world, let's say I don't want to provide uh, parameters via a path. I want to just provide a question mark and then key value pairs in standard query fashion via HTTP. Well then, with at query parameter and the name of the key of the key value pair, I can again specify how to get data into the parameters of my resource methods. So let's take a look at an example. Here again, our hello world resource. I call on my URI for that resource slash hello world. Now, question mark, and the key value pair is my query parameter. So the username supplies me with a username string to the say hello method. In fact, there are many ways to get data into our resources. We've got the um, path and query parameters, but we also have other types of parameters that we can use as well. We can use, for example, a form, an HTML form, and then extract form data with the at form parameter. Now, that seems a little bit, uh, how would I say, perpendicular or orthogonal to how the whole RESTful web service paradigm has been built, and that what I mean is, RESTful Web Services were built to really facilitate machine-to-machine -machine communication. So it's probably unlikely that you have some sort of form mechanism where some user enters information into the form and then submits that data to a RESTful Web Service. What you might find that to be useful for, however, is when you have a case whereby both a uh, human web service, or I should say human interaction with our server, and then some sort of machine out there that needs to communicate both simultaneously with some sort of server-side component, where both of those mechanisms might be able to use RESTful Web Services, essentially to communicate with the same back-end service, and even via this, uh, generally the same API, one using uh, a form that posts things into the uh, RESTful Web Service with at form parameter, and then again, the machine might communicate more uh, via simple uh, RESTful API, and we'll talk about the JAX RS client API here in a bit, to communicate data in in a machine-to-machine -machine way. So the at form parameter is really more of a convenience as opposed to really helping to specify machine-to-machine -machine communication. What else can we get? What other parameters can we get? Well, we get header data via the at head parameter, cookie data with the at cookie parameter, and lastly, uh, matrix data from the at matrix parameter. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.